This is the lecture for uh, the selections from Mackie. Uh, we have Mackie here in the upper left of the screen. There's basically nothing you need to know before you read this. Just one thing to point out. So here's the reading. Uh, great, we start on page 15, now we're on page 16, 17, 18, oh no, 35. So we skip a big chunk of the reading in the middle. We jump from page 18 to page 35. And I just want to uh, give a short summary of what you miss. So you'll read up through page 18, and that's great. And then what he establishes between 18 and 35 is this thing that he summarizes by saying, I conclude. So he says, I conclude then that ordinary moral judgments include a claim to objectivity, an assumption that there are objective values in just the sense in which I am concerned to deny this. So what are objective values? We talked a bit about them in the previous lecture. We've been talking about them the whole course, in fact, because Aristotle thinks morality is objective. There are objective truths about eudaimonia, and therefore objective truths about virtue, and therefore morality is objective. Kant thought morality is objective, or more precisely the way he put it in the groundwork is, if morality is objective, here's what it has to look like. It has to be something based on a maxim which you can will that everybody act on, blah, blah, blah. Uh, one interesting thing we didn't really talk about with Kant is that he never really proves the objectivity. He just says, if morality is objective, this is what it would have to be. Mill thinks morality is objective. It's just about pain and pleasure, and those are objective facts. It's an objective fact what's going to cause the most pleasure or minimize the most pain. And so Mackey basically goes through various moral theorists, philosophers, and also ordinary moral talk. So just what you and I mean, I guess maybe not us because we're in an ethics course, but like people out there who aren't in ethics courses. Uh, what do people mean when they say, oh, that's morally bad or that's morally wrong? Or as he points out earlier in the reading, uh, what do people mean when they use words like cruel and kind in a morally laden way, uh, because we have more moral words than just ethical or unethical or moral or in immoral. And then Aristotle gave us a lot of moral words. So he has all these different virtues and these are all different ways of being moral and immoral. So he claims that, Mackey claims that all of these moral judgments, both made by philosophers and made by normal people, include a claim to objectivity, an assumption that there are objective values. So he thinks, look, all this moral talk, it's about objective morality. Every time somebody talks about morality, they're talking about objective morality. So if there's no such thing as objective morality, all moral talk is incorrect. And that's what he goes on to argue for in the rest of the reading. What are his arguments that morality includes a claim to objectivity? Uh, there's just a lot of them. And if you're interested, you know, I can send you the PDF of the whole book. We don't really need to worry about those. All we need to worry about is what he takes himself to have shown. So he takes himself to have shown that, look, morality includes this assumption of objectivity. If there's no objectivity, it's not like really morality. It's not morality of the sort Kant and Mill and Aristotle are interested in, and it's not morality of the sort that normal people out there are interested in. So that's what he establishes in the part that we skip over. We have his summary of it right here. And the rest you can pick up by reading yourself with the help of the reading quiz and perusal.